everyone and welcome to Lakeside and uh, this is Monday um, the couple of days after going to the Great Electric Train Show at Milton Keynes which I went to on Saturday and uh, it was just a fabulous day out it really was I so enjoyed myself um, I met so many people there um, people who I haven't spoken to for a long time people who I've never spoken to before face to face anyway and uh, yeah I just <laughs> I was blown away um, this is such a fantastic exhibition I love it um, and one of the things I bought there is what you see in front of you um, I'll come back to that later um, along with a few other bits and pieces I bought uh, first of all I want to do a, another shout out to Jeff over at Trams Junction um, because I went and visited him oh, must be about four weeks ago now um, and I kept meaning to um, do another shout out to him because I took some pictures when I visited him of his layout and um, very impressive it is too and because of the name Trams Junction he's, <coughs> excuse me, he's got some trams running on his layout which is unusual these days <coughs> excuse me I've got a frog in my throat um, and uh, yeah, we had a great time together on the Saturday I visited him um, and uh, we spent quite a few hours in his shed playing with his trains and trams of course. So in the description um, below there, press the arrow and uh, you'll see a description and there will be a link there to his um, YouTube channel uh, where you can catch up on any of the videos uh, he's made if you haven't already subscribed then please subscribe to him because I say it's, it's a great layout it really is and it's coming on quite quickly too um, so on with the bits and pieces I bought uh, at the show so if we turn around to here you'll see that there is a whole selection of stuff um, primarily lights when I look at it that way but um, here is a selection of bits from um, the Mega Points, not those, from Mega Points. Um, so I've got a 12 way controller, and this is all for the lift um, I've built. So I've got a 12 way controller there, um, and that will connect up to a rotary servo, uh, which is used for things like hauling in sails on uh, radar controlled yachts. Um, that will do the operating of the lift. This effort will give me a speed um, control over how quickly or slowly the lift goes up and down and also operating the servo which gets plugged into this. And then this unit is the DCC interface so that I can connect that to that and that will then be connected to the track or a power supply anyway um, which will then give me um, control of the lift via my iPad here which is exactly what I wanted so the only thing left to get now is the rotary servo which I will order today online um, and then I can start assembling all this to make the lift go up and down much more readily than what it does now um, uh, what else did we get? Uh, right, these are the little um, electrical connections which you put on the axles of coaches to pick up power. Now, I've done this to a rake of um, teak coaches which I've got, which you may have seen on the, tr on the track running around. Um, I made my own up, which <laughs> they work, but not great, to be honest with you. Um, so I thought I will get some of these um, which are actually properly done and hopefully that will solve some of the issues I have with the, the lights not operating as they should shall we say. So I've got those so I'm looking forward to picking those um, and the rest are primarily lighting, different kinds of lighting from Kite's Lights. Um, again a great company they do so many lights for all your needs really um, if they haven't got it then you probably don't need it 
but um, I've got here some another set of platform lamps to go on here, modern image style, double lights. Uh, I've got strip LEDs for going into uh, some of the buildings at the back um, and possibly the lift, but over here I have some other LEDs which will probably be going in the lift rather than those. Um, and also that will power some of the lighting for underneath, let me show you what I mean. I want to light up this area here underneath um, Grolly there <clears throat> um, so it will go underneath there and up in here in the roof area so the light can be transmitted down into the aperture of the lift itself to illuminate it as it goes up um, and other lights which I've got there which will illuminate the building the buildings at the back along here um, so that really covers most of all the lighting I need for the moment um, so there's a lot of work involved on that but at least it's got me underway uh, what else uh, oh yeah I joined the Hornby Club once again, I came off it a few years back, and, but I've rejoined it again. Uh, primarily because I'm going to be going to the show at Gaydon in November. Um, and if you join the club, you get um, special tickets to go and see other places. Um, and along with that, you get a free loco, and this is the free loco. So it's a little low 4 diesel shunter in network rail livery and uh, very nice too. All I need to do now is get a uh, decoder blanking plate or socket so that I can hardwire it onto the motor and then get a little, um, and I won't put sound in it but I should just put a little standard decoder in it so I can have it running on the track. Um, so that's another little job to do. Um, right, so I think that's about it. Oh no, one more thing, I forgot this. I bought a little police car which I wanted, I had that on my shopping list to do. Obviously the wires here won't be shown, but I've, I've just hooked it up temporarily. If I switch it on. Oh, one of the wires has come out, would you believe it? Let's see if I can bug that in there. There you go. Perfect. So he's just pulled up this woman in the BMW for not having any tax insurance and she's on the phone on her mobile to hubby explaining what's happening. Right, so there you go, so that's a nice little police car there. Right, on to this. So one of the first things I wanted to do when I got to the show was to look around and see if anybody was selling uh, the GWR Hornby Class 800 and um, I had picked my particular stand I wanted to go to before going to the show which was Rails for Sheffield and they were virtually um, right by the entrance so I made a beeline for there and sure enough they had two and um, I picked out a deal they were doing which was the whole set so it's the driver car, the trailer at the end, plus a three coach pack. And they were doing a deal there. And uh, so I was going to get it separately anyway, but because they were doing a deal on the whole lot, then I went for that. Um, and I am just so impressed with it. It's a beautiful loco or a set. Um, so well detailed, um, lovely livery. And uh, I've got the... LNER version on pre-order which is coming about Christmas time I think um, and I did check on Facebook to see if they ever ran together and they don't run together but they are at Reading I think um, where they do actually you can see them sitting side by side occasionally 
Um, so it won't be wrong, it'll be rare, but it won't be wrong to have them side by side on my layout. And I don't really care if it is wrong anyway, because rule number one, I run what I like, as you know. Um, but this one, this is the first start of the 800 series for me. And i um, very, very pleased with it too. Apart from... <laughs> In typical Hornby tradition, as you're opening the box, you're sort of breathing in and going, will it be all right, will it be all right? And no, it wasn't all right, of course. So, um, what's happening is two things. One is the drive car, this one in front of you, is making a noise, which is like a clicking noise. And, um, so uh, and it was like that straight from the box and i thought okay well i'll run it in and uh, hopefully the clicking noise will either reduce or go eventually um but it doesn't it's actually seems to be getting a little bit louder um as time goes on um so i i've stripped it down as far as i can to do a change of loudspeaker because i put a lego man biff sound decoder in it um, so I shall be looking at that further up here then in the train sorry in the coach pack there are three coaches one two three and there's something wrong with this coach and if I go down I wonder if you can see it because I didn't see it initially and I'll tell you what it is it's this part here which is like a silver plastic item which is probably I don't know air con brake something or other I don't know but there's this silver box here um, which is screwed to the underneath of the coach itself it's missing off this one totally there not there rather and it's never been fitted because you can see from the screw holes that they've never had a screw in them um, so that's missing but not only that when I took it out of the box either that bogey or that bogey I can't remember um, drops off it just completely falls out of the coach um, along with its wiring for the internal lighting so what with the noise and that, I thought, oh God, here we go. So my first thing today, Monday, was to phone up Hornby, which were really about a juice of the chocolate teapot. Um, they haven't got any spares as per normal. Um, because it's so new, they don't feel that they need to carry spares, I guess. Um, I asked them if there was a service sheet for it because I couldn't find it online because I wanted the part number for the motor. Uh, they haven't got any motors, they haven't got a service sheet, so I, it was quite evident from the early part of the conversation that that was going to be a dead loss. So I gave up with that and then I phoned Rails of Sheffield where I got this from and they couldn't have been more helpful. Absolutely staggering service from them. Um, and uh, I must admit, I was blown away by the um, the conversation, really, because I was up front. I told them that I had modified the interior to take a, loud, uh, a larger loudspeaker. Um, I doubt if I could return it to them. Oh, no, he says, no, return it. He says, just take out the loudspeaker um, and the decoder, return it to us, and we'll do a chassis swap. Really? I said, I wasn't expecting that. But he said, no, he says, yeah, you haven't touched the chassis itself. I said, no, no, I said, the chassis is box standard. I said, there's nothing touched on the, it's only the internals in here, which I've altered. Um, so, you know, it's something which I wasn't really aware that I could return it. He said, no, return it and we'll do a chassis swap. He said, it'll take a couple of days. I'll send you a return slip uh, for the coach and also the drive car and we'll do a direct swap for the coach up there and we'll repair or not repair but do a chassis swap for the drive car so yeah brilliant service 
So it'll take a couple of days to get there, probably give them a couple of weeks to, to do it and then it'll be back. I will show you what it sounds like without any sound so you can get an idea of the noise. Dirty track. Hopefully you can hear that. It sounds like there's something revolving and hitting something. And obviously the faster you go, the faster the noise gets. stop it there. So I said to the chap at Rails, I said well what I want to do is to strip this right down first uh, down to the chassis. I won't do any modifications to it but I want to strip it down to see if I can sort out what that noise is um, before I send it back. If it's something I can do then I will. Um, if not then I'll put it all back together again and send it off to you. He said that's absolutely fine. He says no problems. He said, just take your chip out and loudspeaker and send it back to us. So that's what I will do. Have a look at it first, um, and then uh, if I can't solve it, then I will send it back to them. There's no point in sending it back to them if it's a quick fix I can do. Um, so that's what I will do. So uh, let's put the sound on. So before I do that, let me just explain something to you briefly let's go over here so I can put it here <clears throat> I went to Lego and Biff as I said to get the decoder and attached to the decoder was the speaker that's the speaker which was attached this tiny tiny little speaker but to be fair that's about the only room you've got to fit a speaker in and that speaker fits in I'll do the trailer car it fits in to this little tray compartment underneath here. You just release three screws, that drops away, and you can then fit your decoder in here with your loudspeaker. Bearing in mind there is a circuit board underneath here as well, so it only leaves you a little bit of room to put your sound decoder and speaker in. And that, believe it or not, how tiny it is, that's about how much room you've got to fit a speaker. I thought, well, that's not going to suit me. Um, I switched it on with that, and yes, I've got sound out of it, but the quality was not great, as you would expect. So I went to my loudspeaker box, where I keep all my spare loudspeakers, and I came up with this. <laughs> Quite a different size. So it's a mega bass speaker, and it's 8 ohms, um, so would fit perfectly as regards electronics. Would it fit physically? Yes, it does. Um, I've taken the lugs off here, uh, on the other side, and that square now fits inside here where the guard would normally sit and there is a series of plastic walling in here which I carved away um, and I fitted the loudspeaker in there. Um, the only other thing I have to do is there is a rectifier attached to the roof or the lighting bar which goes all the way along the roof here. There is a rectifier just here. Um, so I unsoldered that and moved it to the back here, out of the way of the speaker, and just extended some cabling to the solder points on the lighting bar. And it works fine, as you can see. There's lighting, and I've actually put people in it now. Um, and so I did all this knowing that there was a noise on it, but, um, I was hoping and praying that the noise would diminish with more running. Obviously it isn't. Um, so anyway, uh, Rail said they will take this back. All I have to do is take the loudspeaker out and the decoder and send it back to them. Job done.
So let's get on with some sound now. It comes in two modes, electric and diesel, as per the real one. It starts off in electric mode by default. So we get that going. And then after that, you can't really hear anything as regards the electric. It's, it's there, but very, very faintly. Which I suppose is the right way of doing it. I've never been up close to one, so I wouldn't know how it sounds, to be honest with you. If I bring it in... stop it. I can now turn on the diesel power and you can do it while it's on the move, you don't have to stop it. So you turn on the diesel so that then cuts out the electric sound you just get the diesel mode and there you go. turn the sound off. So it runs absolutely fine, no issues with it at all, it doesn't derail, it's fine and to be honest with you the coach it runs, it doesn't derail but I don't like the idea of the fact that there's a bit missing and also the bogey drops off um, so that's definitely going back. Um, they will just do a straight swap for that. Okay I think that's about it, uh, I'll just show you a very quick update what I've been doing here um, I've installed, well, built the other um, escalator and installed that on the platform. I've got to light it yet as that one. I've also got to build the canopy like that for this one, made out of three of these cut and joined together. Um, the lift, I've made up a little lift for this side which connects via a subway from this lift here um, so people can come down the lift under the subway along and up into the lift and exit onto the platform here. Uh, I've just got a 
for the moment I've just got a little kiosk there from my previous layout um, on the back um, and I've put the canopy which was here temporarily over there for the moment um, so with all the lighting now which I've got from Kite's Lights I can now start thinking about illuminating these buildings here plus the lift plus the station building itself adding the lamps to the buildings but first of all I've got to cover this platform here uh, I need to do that next because uh, I've finished all the work on that now so I can now cover that building at long last ballasting finish off the ballasting and weathering over there so it's a huge amount of work to do and that's without even thinking about the car park and the route which I've got to do and I've got all the components now to do that um, from Fala so I should be able to do that um, yeah so getting out I think that's about it as regards the layout update not a huge amount um, but enough to be getting on with but I'm pleased I've got the lift done and the escalator uh, that's a major part done uh, so all I've got to do now is just put the lighting at the bottom of the footwell and then that will be complete so that's it um, thank you very much for watching uh, thank you very much to all the new subscribers um, oh yeah that reminds me um, I checked yesterday I haven't checked this morning but I checked yesterday and um, I'm getting very very near that 10,000 subscriber mark and if you remember I said that if I ever reach that magical number I would hold a competition um, for reaching 10,000 as a thank you to all my subscribers um, each and every one of you um, and let's hope that uh, you will win somebody's got to win it so let's hope it's you um, okay so uh, I will love you and leave you and as soon as I get to that 10,000 which hopefully won't be too long now probably a month or so and uh, we'll be there and then we can do that competition all right people um, many thanks to all the people who stopped and had a chat with me at the great electric train show uh, I was overwhelmed with all the generosity and the comments I was getting um, it really took me back it really blew me away to be honest um, I, I was so elated um, yeah okay right I will speak to you again soon and uh, if I get any news of the um, class 800 I will obviously put it up as a video alright okay so bye for now and I will speak to you again soon so bye for now So this afternoon I took it all apart, stripped it down, put it on the rolling road, just the bare chassis without any sound um, in it as regards the loudspeaker, just the decoder. Um, and I could see immediately what it was. It was the long drive shot. If you think that the motor is just about here, there's a long drive shaft which goes all the way back to about here where the gearbox is. Um, and it was that and this end here uh, where there's a universal joint going into the gearbox it was a universal joint and it wasn't actually clicked into position uh, perfectly um, as soon as I looked at that I could see that um, and I took the chassis apart as regards all the seating area which obviously stays there when you take the body shell off I had to take all that off um, and reposition that drive shaft going through here and once I did that I gave it a test and sure enough no click so listen to this all we can hear is the motor turning no clickety click perfect so I phoned rails back up and told them um, they were obviously pleased that they didn't have to do anything to this but I still will be sending the 
coach back which has got that bit there missing and the bogey drops out and they said no problem he's already got a replacement coach ready for me for when he receives my old one back and he said as soon as he receives it he'll send the new one out for me so it sounds as though it's all been sorted now thank goodness and the sound if I just turn that off for a moment and put the brake on Uh, I will also show you um, a photograph of how I've done the install with a picture of the speaker just sitting here um, and also a photograph of the repositioned um, stay alive capacitor for the lights to stop them flickering and as you can see that they're working fine um, so I'll put those on here now so hopefully you can freeze that if you want to have a look at it um, and so let's start it up. So the lights are on. Yep. And the lighting is really nice. It even shows up the, hopefully, I've got a, we're just about to see him, a uh, driver in the cab. Um, let's put the sound on. So electric motor to start with. Diesel. So I'm really, really pleased, obviously, that uh, this is all working. I shouldn't have had to have done this, obviously. I know that. I know many people would have said that I should have sent it back straight away. Yes, I know that. But a modeler being a modeler, sometimes you look at it and go, do you know what, I think I can fix it by taking it apart and having a look at it. Um, fair play to those people who wouldn't want to delve in it. I understand that. But being an engineer by trade, then... To me, it was just a natural instinct to take it apart and see if I could fix it. Um, so there you go. All done and dusted. Just need to get the other coach replaced. Okay, so hopefully, um, well, it's pleased me, put it that way. Um, okay, so bye for now, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.